I would like, uh, since you've been so gracious as to honor me with this special presentation, I would like in turn to dedicate uh, this entire session, this reading, this publication, to some rather special people. I shall do that uh, at the end. Please, will you be my reminder to make sure I don't forget? Yeah, because the dedication takes two, two parts. I may forget the second one, because the other one, the first one, is sort of, um, for me, so important. I want to, uh, while I'm still fresh, I would like to make that dedication and then make the second part. And so the poems I'm going to read right now uh, two poems to start us off. And I'm dedicating uh, those two poems, uh, short poems, to a great figure, a great Nigerian figure, um, a jurist, a legalist, uh, a leader, um, a, a royal uh, figure, a leader of men and women, a role model, one of the most tolerant, ecumenically spirited individuals that this nation has ever produced. And uh, uh, his name, I believe you all know him, you should. His name is Sulu Gambari, who is the Emir of Ilori. <clears throat> So these two first poems are dedicated to him in appreciation of his role, his leadership model, his exemplary quality, virtue of tolerance to his subjects, his fellow beings generally. I'd like to commend him, to recommend him to all of you here, and in fact all the world as an example to follow in your dealings with your fellow men, women, and children. In fact, you should go further. Go further, if possible, even outstrip him, because you see virtues like tolerance, which, an example of which I have cited, uh, virtues like that lead eventually even to martyrdom to immolation of the innocent. It leads to the public butchery of our children, like Deborah, for instance. The kind of example, the kind of virtue I'm talking about leads to turning even our fellow school children, our, fellow, our children into murderers, murdering their own colleagues. At a tender age, they become killers simply because of examples of tolerance, of leadership shown by figures like the Emir Sulugambari. We owe people like Sulugambari, Boko Haram, Iswap, Al Shabaab, all those who believe that theirs and only theirs is the only way of understanding and approaching Godhead. And heaven help all those who cannot follow the path they are blazing so openly, so lovingly for the rest of humanity. And when some of us, of course, try to highlight their conduct, to make sure that the whole world appreciates them, uh, they turn to us, they are so modest. They say we should, we, that their, their, their lamps do not require any special burnishing. Uh, the action speaks for themselves, and therefore we should go and sit down and mind our poetry, perhaps. But we as poets and as humanists, we continue to do our duty to bring them out to the limelight. If we will go even further, we'll invite them to visit other places. If necessary, we'll organize even their expenditure, even give them ESTA code, to bring them to other areas, other societies, which practice the same religion that they say they are promoting 
in this society so they can see how others of the same faith treat other human beings of other faiths. And I'm talking about those societies like the Emirates where this religion began in the first place before it became Bawari Messi in countries like Nigeria where literally every day somebody is being butchered, being martyred, is being disfigured simply because they prefer their own path to their own spiritual fulfillment. Today, we're here in the home of the muses. It could be in Greece, where the muses are supposed to be born, but we know that we have our own muses here. And wherever two or three poets are gathered together, there becomes the home of the muses. And I'm using our presence, our collective presence and creative energy in this place to make three requests of all the security agencies of this country and of the governance itself, right from the president to the lowest individual in this country. A three requests to make, demands in fact, to make on behalf of humanity. One, all the case files must be opened on all those who have been killed as a result of intolerance. I don't care whether they were said to have abused this avatar or this prophet or not. The important thing is that they have been extrajudicially murdered. And time and time again, these files disappear. The students who butchered, who killed in public, in open daylight, in the presence of armed police, the students who were arrested have been released understand that the police, some police commander made a comment that they are not expected to go and manufacture uh, accused or the criminal perpetrators. Imagine that kind of language coming from those who are supposed to protect us in this country. Something was done there, films were made, the students who chased that girl into what you considered safe, uh, safety, they're known, some of them were arrested, and then they were freed. And we say that we're living in a civilized society where royal heads like Sulu Gambari can insist that those who happen not to believe in his own pathway, our own traditional, our own traditional ways of worshipping de any deity, whatever, of our own choosing, if you don't believe in those deities, that's your problem. Follow yours. Nobody has disturbed you. Nobody has come over and said, uh, come and join us. No. Some people say, we believe in giving honor to the goddess Oshun, and we have a festival called Isese, and we want to celebrate that festival. Just what is your goddamn business to prevent them simply because you're sitting on a throne? And yet, they get away with it. Time and time and time again, they get away with it. I think it is about time to speak truth to one another. Not just to governments, not people just to government, but people to, to people. It's about time that we move to proactivity rather than reacting, reacting when insults have been heaped on our heritage, when our roots have been insulted, desecrated. In one of my comments, I, I mentioned the fact that I teach a few weeks a time in one of the uh, Islamic countries. Go there. Go there and see how non-Muslims are treated. They're treated as human beings, as equals, entitled to all the benefits of society. Go to the supermarkets. You'll find that behind the main, uh, the main uh, shopping center, the same structure, 
there's a place there which is reserved, reserved for non-Muslims where you can go and buy whatever you want, eat pork to your heart's content, stuff yourself, and go home. And there are liquor stores there. You can go and buy your drinks. Nobody disturbs you. Just don't get drunk on the streets. And there you see the other side of that, of that society. And yet here you have motor drivers, laborers, and in a pittance being set upon and burned to death simply because they are driving a lorry full of beer. Is anybody forcing beer down your throat? The man is earning his a living and is catering to those of us who say, yes, we're ready to be damned to hell for drinking beer or wine or whatever. That's our business. You go there, as you come out of the airport, right in the open there, there's a supermarket. Right, as you come out of the airport, right within the airport, where you can buy your drinks. And then here, all these hypocrites, hypocrites and liars, try and pretend that lifestyles are not pertinent to groups, to individuals, and they should be left alone to enjoy their lifestyles, as long as they do not disturb the peace of others. So three requests. I made one. Uh, the files should be open, beginning with Deborah, on all those who are being killed extrajudicially judicially in the name of religion. Two, I want all of us who have connections anywhere, anywhere in the world, if I'm beginning here, address the diplomats and so on. You know, they assist the, the world by uh, denying visas to um, violent politicians, right? It happened during the last elections. They even named names. They said, we're not going to give visas to this person. We're not going to give all those who preach violence in politics. Yeah, we will not give them visa. We say extend it to religious bigots. Extend this to those who preach and who applaud violence in the name of religion. Let's tackle the embassies. Tell your government. They assist us. These people, they live here, these hypocrites, they go to these other places, they drink to their heart's content, debauch themselves anyhow, then they come here in the name of piety. They can restrict our own lifestyles, our own choices. Three, it's about time we demanded, on behalf of traditional religions, an annual holiday like Islam and Christianity. We've had enough. We had enough of being second class citizens in this nation. So, equal time, equal space, we demand public holidays. We demand it of state governments, local governments, and the federal government. We want an annual public holiday. Those are my three demands in this home of the Muses.